So my name is Marty Cohn. I'm a professor at the University of Florida. And the question that we're addressing in this paper is a very fundamental and simple question, and that is, how did snakes lose their legs? So we know from the fossil record of snakes that um, ancestral snakes had complete forelimbs and hind limbs. They had all the basic features of the vertebrate body plan. Uh, in a revolutionary time, forelimbs were reduced and then lost, and then hind limbs were reduced and then ultimately lost in most of the advanced snakes. But some snakes, like pythons and boas, diverged from the lineage leading to the advanced snakes before legs were completely eliminated. And if you look carefully at the tail end of this python, you can see the rudiments of his leg, this little black spot right next to his vent. Uh, you see a claw sticking out. And if we x-rayed him, you would see that there's a rudiment of the pelvic girdle and a small femur and a claw. So the question is, why does the python uh, stop developing its leg after it's laid down just a femur and a piece of claw? Whereas in uh, lizards, you see development of a femur, a tibia, a fibula, and the digits. We know that the earliest sign of limb development is the emergence of a pair of buds at the uh, site of the future arms and the site of the future legs. If we compare the sonic hedgehog expression in an anole lizard with a python, you can see that in the anole, the hedgehog expression comes on in the early limb bud and stays on, and that's driving outgrowth and development of the skeleton. If we compare what happens in python embryos at the same stages, there's this early weak domain of sonic hedgehog expression, but then 24 hours after the egg is laid, it becomes undetectable. So there's this pulse of activity, it's fairly weak, and it doesn't stay on. The next question we asked was, why is Sonic Hedgehog coming on in a weak domain and not being sustained? Uh, it's known from work in the mouse that there's an enhancer that specifically drives Sonic Hedgehog expression in the limb. It's called the ZRS, for ZPA Regulatory Sequence. Uh, Francisca went looking for the ZRS in the Python genome, and she found, to our surprise, that they have a, we a very well-conserved ZRS. Francisca drilled down to look at the sequence of the ZRS and pythons, and she identified some deletions that occur in regions that we hypothesized might be binding sites for important transcription factors, like HOXD13 and HAND2. Uh, we had already looked at those transcription factors and found that they were present in fairly normal, typical patterns for a limbed vertebrate. So the activators were present, but there were deletions that occurred in regions that might be necessary for those transcription factors to bind. And we did some biochemistry and found that these are indeed binding sites for Hox proteins, and when they're deleted, the Hox proteins can't bind. And we suspected that that might underlie the failure to activate the ZRS and ultimately to drive transcription of sonic hedgehog in the limb. So we next asked whether there was any functional consequence of that region of degeneration in the ZRS of pythons by making transgenic mice. First, putting in the anole lizard pre-ZRS ZRS construct, and then comparing its activity to that of the python enhancer. And as you can see here, when we put the anole enhancer into mice, it drove a pattern of reporter gene expression that's very typical of sonic hedgehog for a, leg, a limbed vertebrate. There's expression in the forelimb bud and the hind limb bud of the mouse. But when we took the python enhancer and put it into mice, we saw a very different result. A very weak uh, activity is seen in both the forelimb and the hind limb. Just a few blue cells are seen in both of the limbs. So this enhancer is a very weak driver of transcription in the limbs. We were also struck by the expression pattern of Hox D13, which is initially involved in building the upper part of the limb, but has a later role in laying down the foot and the hand. To our surprise, we found that this distal domain of Hox D13 expression that's required for building hands and feet also occurred in the leg buds of the python. There was effectively a molecular autopod being laid down. Uh, specifying a region of cells that should have the identity of the foot, which was totally unexpected because pythons don't have feet. When we looked at the uh, regulatory landscape that controls Hox D13 expression, we found very striking conservation 
all of these uh, regulatory elements that are necessary for driving Hox D13 expression in the, in the limb, including in the foot plate of the limb, were present in pythons. And the structure of the enhancers appeared to be very well conserved. So conservation of this gene regulatory landscape, we think, can explain why pythons have held on to this distal domain of expression. Francisca had a look at uh, early stages of cartilage development, and she was able to find, using SOX9 as a probe for early cartilage condensations, that distal to the femur, they start to condense cartilage in, this, uh, in the tip of the hind limb bud. And at later stages, we could even find rudiments of the femur, of the tibia, and of the fibula, and of this autopodial uh, foot plate condensation. Now this doesn't persist uh, beyond hatching, but it tells us that pythons are going much further in hind limb development, laying down the onlogon of the hind limb skeleton all the way to the foot. So we think that in addition to explaining why hind limb development truncates at such an early stage due to the uh, failure to sustain sonic hedgehog expression, this might also explain one of the mysteries of snake evolution. And that is the reacquisition of limbs. But reappearance of these structures in evolution is a difficult thing to uh, explain. And I think what our results suggest is that they never really lost the hind limb altogether. The early model of the cartilage for each of the hind limb elements uh, was never lost. It's still present in modern pythons. So perhaps reacquisition of limbs by these extinct groups of snakes uh, might have simply involved holding on to the structures that they had and allowing them to differentiate rather than to degenerate.